This video is about generalized nonlinear models. We're going to talk about how these type of models differ from other types of regression models that we've looked at in the class. And then we'll talk about logistic regression and how we can use it for binary data. So what are generalized linear models? Well, these can be considered an extension of linear regression models. The good thing about them is they, that they allow the dependent variable to be non-normal. Uh, and so that in that case, we don't necessarily need to rely on the normal distribution to say something about the response variable or the dependent variable that we're interested in. So what kinds of data does generalized linear models work well for? Well, it works really well if the dependent variables are binary or counts. What we mean when we say binary is that our outcome is usually a yes or a no, or a zero or a one. When we have data that are binary, we can use generalized nonlinear models, and in particular logistic regression, to say something about the response variable of interest. If we have counts, we have different numbers of things that are occurring, and we can use a generalized linear model to explain what's going on. And so generally with count data, we have numbers of observations in integers. So 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to however many we might have. When data are binary or counts, Generalized linear models are very useful. So let's take a step back and just review what uh, linear models look like. This is a model form for a multiple regression model. We've already looked at this a lot in class. So in this case, we might have k different independent variables, and we're inter interested in how they predict y, a variable of interest. The big thing here, uh, as we're predicting y, uh, we can use all of our x1, x2, and xk, however many variables we might have, but we make a big assumption about the distribution of the residuals here, how we denote them epsilon sub i. We assume that they're distributed normally, and not only are they distributed normally, but they have a mean of zero and some standard deviation associated with them. And so in this case, this in, in knowing this, this allows us to run inference on the different regression coefficients. So think about all the tests we did looking at confidence intervals, looking at t-tests, looking at tests of the slopes, comparing them to see whether or not they're different from zero. This is how we'd use linear models. However, there are some drawbacks to linear models. Linear regression investigates linear relationships between dependent and independent variables. But we can't always assume that this is in, this is correct. For example, the relation between income and age is curved. That is, as income rises, it tends to rise early in the early parts of someone's adulthood. It flattens out later in life, and then it declines after people retire. And so if we were to plot a scatter plot of income over age, we would see these trends, and we wouldn't necessarily assume that there's a linear relationship between income and age. And so we can say that linear models aren't appropriate when the range of y is restricted. That is, maybe it's a binary or a count variable. And we can't use linear models when the variance of y depends on the mean. And so this is really where generalized linear models come through. They extend the linear model to account for both of these scenarios. Here are some components of generalized linear models. These are flexible generalizations of linear regression, and they allow for the response variable to have error distribution that's something other than a normal distribution. So the generalized linear model generalizes linear regression uh, by allowing the linear model, something like we might have here, to be related to the response variable using what we call a link function. And that link function describes a relationship between the linear predictor and the mean value. And now we can say that the magnitude of the variance of each measurement is then going to be a function of its predicted value. And so this variance function will describe the relationship between the variance of the variable that we're interested in and the mean value of that variable. And so when you run generalized linear models, you might want to compare different models and how they perform to other models. 
Now in a linear regression sense, we use the R squared value. Now the R squared value predicts or, or tells you something about the proportion of variability that's explained by your model. Now when we're dealing with different kinds of data, we'll use something called the AIC or the IK key information criteria to judge the quality of each model. The AIC is, can be calculated by hand here. We take two and we multiply it by the number of parameters in the model, which we'll call K. And then we need to know what the likelihood of the model is. And so from a regression standpoint, you can think about this as being a representation of the sums of squares. Here is going to be a maximum value for the likelihood of this model occurring. And so ideally, you would choose the best model based on the lowest value of AIC. And so the lower the value, the better. So we actually saw some AIC values in some of the R output we've looked at previously in class. Generally, if you fit two models, model one and model two, if you find a difference of two units or more, you would prefer that model. And so you would always prefer a model with a lower AIC. The good thing about AIC is you can compare multiple models together as long as you fit them to the same dependent variable. And so the AIC is going to be a handy tool as we think about building more complex models. We'll want to say, what's the AIC value? The AIC we then can compare to different kinds of models that we fit. Now to run generalized linear models in R, just like there's a LM function for linear models where we do regression and analysis of variance, the GLM function allows us to fit generalized linear models. This is very similar to the LM function, but we need to specify some family of the distribution. So we're going to talk about what logistic regression is, but if we wanted to fit it to a data set of interest, we're going to make a model called m.logistic for our logistic regression model. We'll use the GLM function, and just like we'll do y tilde x in the LM case, we can do y tilde x in the GLM case. The key thing here for a logistic regression model is that we treat the data binomial as a binomial. And so in that case, the family is binomial. So this is the big thing that we need to put in logistic regression that we don't put in linear regression. And then we specify our data. In this case, my.data is the uh, data set of interest. And then we can do a summary of that logistic model that we created. And so the GLM function in R will tell us and provide us ways to fit generalized linear models. Now there are lots of different families uh, that we might be able to use in R. And so the logistic regression uses the binomial, where the link between the mean and the variance is a logit. So you often hear logistic regression, sometimes referred to as logit regression. They're the same thing. Uh, the one is just referring to the link function that links the mean and the variance together. Here's an example where we might do a Poisson regression. We'll talk about that in the next lecture, but we just assume that the data are distributed a little bit differently. Here we have three categorical var or three variables uh, that are interested in predicting y, x1, x2, and x3. We can say family is Poisson if we think that these data are distributed in a Poisson form. And so just by simply changing the family, you can change the underlying distribution that are a part of generalized linear models. And so understanding which distribution and how your data are distributed is going to help you immensely when it comes to fitting generalized linear models.